Okay, another one we want to graph, and it's asking us for this information. When we look at this one, we notice that the x squared does not come first. So later on, it's going to help if we make sure we have this written in the proper form because we need to use uh, the vertex formula later and also possibly the quadratic formula. So it's good to know what your a, b, and c are on this one. And you want to make sure that it's written in the proper form because otherwise you may accidentally put a 6 in there for a instead. So writing it in the proper form is always best first when they give you a problem that's not written uh, from highest to lowest power. So now that we know that, the first thing we need to find is going to be the vertex. So the vertex, is, you're going to use negative b over 2a. So again, that's why it's important to have this written in the proper form. So first, uh, for your vertex, you're going to do x is equal to negative b over 2a. So in this case, the b is negative 4. So we do negative times negative 4 over 2 times a, in this case, 2 times 1. And that gives us uh, just 2. You want to find the y value also, so 2 has to go back into, now in this case you could use either one, but I'll just use the second one uh, for all the work I'm going to be doing here. So y equals 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 6, and that's going to give us 4 minus 8, negative 4 uh, plus 6 is going to be positive 2. So now I know that my vertex is going to be 2, 2. My axis symmetry, again, it's always x equals the x-coordinate of your vertex, so it's going to be x equals 2 for axis of symmetry. Okay, let's do the y-intercept. The y-intercept, you're going to make the x equal to 0. If you put that in here, you get 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 6, and that's going to give uh, 6. So that means that it crosses the y-intercept at 6. Now I want to do the x-intercept x-intercept is where you put in a 0 for y. So by doing that, you're going to get 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 6. So you have a couple different ways of solving this. The first one we want to try and do is factoring. If I try and factor this, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to make 6, but then add to be negative 4. Well, that's not going to happen. There's not two numbers that work. You either have 2, or th two and 3 or 1 and 6. So if I can't factor it, then the next thing to do would be the quadratic formula. So quadratic formula, I want to make sure I know my a, b, and c. So again, it's important to make this in the proper form with the x squared that comes first. I have a is 1, my b is equal to negative 4, and my c is equal to 6. I'm going to put these into the quadratic formula. So I have negative b, negative times negative 4, plus or minus. I have b squared, so negative 4 squared minus 4 times ac, a is 1, and c is 6, all over 2 times a. So that's your quadratic formula right there. We want to simplify this down as much as possible. So I get 4 plus or minus the square root of, I get 16 minus 24 on the inside of that. That's going to give us negative 8. And on the bottom, the a value there, that should be a 1. So I have a 2 on the bottom. Uh, so this, is, this would be, we notice that there's a negative number inside of square root. That tells us that we're going to have an i as part of our answer. We have talked about how you simplify that with i, so we are going to do that on this one. Okay, so we do 4 plus or minus. Now 8 can be written as 4 times 2. The square root of 4 is 2, which means that a 2 will come outside of the radical. So I get 4 plus or minus 2i over 2. All that's going to be over 2. Now you want to separate this by dividing these two numbers and dividing these two numbers to get our final answer for the x-intercept. So I'll just write down the final answer. You're going to get 2 plus or minus. I get 2 over 2 here. That's going to be i times the square root of 2. That would be the simplified form. So now that we've done that and we've, we've got our answers for everything they're asking for, we're ready now to do the graph. So the vertex is going to be at 2, 2. That's going to be right here. The y-intercept is going to be 6. So it's going to cross here. And so now what about this one? The x-intercept is going to be 2 plus or minus i square root of 2. So the question is, are we going to see this on the graph? Well, the answer to that is going to be no. And we know that because we have a 1 in front of the x squared. So if you have a, a positive number in front of the x squared, that means the graph is going to be opening up. So because it does, the graph is opening up like this, that's going to tell us that the graph is not going to cross anywhere on the x-axis. So in fact, whenever you do a graph like this and you get 
an I as part of your answer for an x-intercept, that's going to tell you that the graph does not cross anywhere because this is an imaginary number and we're talking about a real number axis here. So that's why even if you get an I for the answer, you're not going to see it on your graph itself. So I only have these two points only. Now I'm going to use my axis of symmetry. My axis of symmetry was x equals 2, which means that's going to be my fold line. Every point on one side of the dotted line is going to be the same distance on the other side of the dotted line. So this is a distance of 2 to the dotted line there. That means that I can write another point exactly at the same y value, so directly across. That's going to be a distance of 2 away as well. So a distance of 2 here, a distance of 2 there. I have three points and that's going to be enough to draw my parabola and my finished graph is going to look like this. And what we notice about that again is that graph is not going to cross the x-axis. So because it doesn't, that's why again I get the i as part of my answer. And so we've answered everything. We have everything all filled in here and here is my graph. Okay, let's find the domain and range of this one. Okay, so domain is going to talk about the x values that the graph uses. For all these, when you have parabolas, the domain is always going to be negative infinity to positive infinity. We can put, there's no restrictions on our x. For the range, that means we're looking for y values only. So for this one, the lowest on this point in this graph is going to be 2, and it's using only these values going above. So no part of the graph is used down below here. So your range is going to go from 2, and it's going to go to positive infinity.